So hello everybody. Um, first I have to say, uh, excuse me, my English is not that good. I hope you will understand everything I'm going to tell you. <laughs> if not, please raise your hands and cry. <laughs> okay, so my name is uh, Stefan Kraus. I'm from Byte the Bytes. Uh, it's a small company. We are about six people working in there. And our profession is about terrain generation. So we started in 2007 uh, by creating a terrain SDK, which was able to visualize whole planets up to solar systems in real time. We got the European Games Award in 2010, made the first place. And yeah, uh, interestingly, nobody in the games industry actually was really interested in our terrain SDK. But luckily, um, we could sell it to, uh, to the serious branch as uh, Airbus you know, Eurocopters using this. So um, yeah, and uh, then we got a call in 2008 from a, from a good friend of us, which is also our partner today. It is uh, Johannes Rosenberg. Um, he's also from Germany and he is the original inventor of uh, geocontrol. Maybe somebody knows geocontrol by its name. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yes, geocontrol was a very powerful terrain generator. Um, uh, it, it, it was very known for its uh, erosion and sedimentation capabilities of creating absolutely realistic looking terrains. And yes, uh, sadly, uh, Johannes got a stroke. He got a heart attack uh, in 2000, I think about two, two, 2007. And, um, uh, but we already were in contact with him and he called us up and were, uh, was asking us if he could uh, or if you are interested in, uh, in taking your control and uh, bring it to your next level into uh, like a modern UI and supporting a forum and yes, uh, developing a second version of it actually. So um, actually we really loved his work. His work was uh, absolutely awesome. He's an absolute genius in terrain generation. And we said, yes, of course, we'll do that. And we met and we made a really great and awesome partnership. So Johannes, if you're watching this uh, stream, then Welcome, <laughs> and thanks for your work, it's awesome. So, um, yes, in 2013, finally, we introduced, uh, no, it was about 2012, we introduced World Creator 1. Actually, World Creator 1 was GeoControl 2, but we had uh, fixed up a little bit UI, make it uh, bug-free, uh, make it uh, available again for the Mac, with a stable version running on it. Um, it was a lot more stable version than the previous one, and we also helped him to 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 to, to set up his uh, forum again and to support with his customers and so on. And then 2013, we made a promise to the customers because you know if you if you're not uh, taking care of a forum, you're not taking care of your customers because you were sick and you had a heart stroke, um, then many people just go away and they leave your product actually. So we first had to get back the trust from his customers, and then we made a big promise um, that we're going to develop Work Creator 2 with a completely new modern UI, and especially with a very, very powerful and extremely fast generator, completely done on the GPU side. So what came out is, that's what I'm going to show you today. It's a traditional terrain generator. Um, all the work is now multi-threaded and done on the GPU side, so you can expect a very, very fast generator. So like, if I'm, if I'm talking about fast generator, I'm, I'm meaning with that that it's real-time capable. So, um, so when we came up with WorldCreator this year for the Unity version, was this, this was more a strategic uh, decision actually, because we needed a platform where we can quickly just go and implement all the, all the generation stuff, all the algorithms, uh, without taking care of um, how the UI should look like, or let's, let, let's say how to render all the terrain, how to do the rendering stuff, because this is just another part which is re really huge and enormous. It's a really huge and, uh, and an enormous and a very difficult task to make. So the, uh, the decision came up to, to implement a plugin for the Unity engine, and we did release it uh, this year in March. And yes, uh, after that release, we decided to, of course, take the next step and uh, bring World Creator as a standalone version also for Windows, Mac and Linux. And that's what I really would like to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. I, I really hope this machine will be able to, to, to do it, but uh, thanks 
uh, that we could take the machine. So it's an untested machine for me now. Um, and yes, uh, the uh, the current standalone version is in alpha mode. So don't expect uh, don't expect uh, a ready or finished version. I just can show you the very basic things, and you can get a first peek how it will look like. So, um, Word Creator. Does anybody heard of Word Creator before? There were some people around. Okay, awesome. So, this is a terrain generator. You can see all these images that you see here. Um, actually, were created with Word Creator and then uh, rendered inside Terragen or Vue. These, uh, most of these images that we present here are from um, are from a customer that's working very in depth with us. Thanks, Alan. And uh, yeah, he makes some really great, awesome work for us, and much appreciated. So, uh, yeah, what I want to show you here is uh, this is actually how the Unity UI looks like. There are a lot of things you can adjust. I will show you uh, quite quickly, also in action in real time in, inside Unity here. Um, the standalone version is coming. There are no uh, screenshots about the standalone version yet. It's only the Unity version. Um, and this uh, terrain generator, well, it's built up on, uh, up on a GPU implementation. It has really some interesting features, just like uh, we call it the input terrain feature, which means um, you can drag in an, an, uh, uh, a ready terrain that has been, I don't know, if you painted or if you have downloaded some, some dem files from the internet. And you can uh, just drop it into Word Creator and use Word Creator further, enhance it, or further to sculpt it out, and make it maybe looking more realistic. Especially if you have uh, resolution maps that, um, if you have uh, height maps that are not that high in the uh, resolution. So you can see here, the Word Creator in this in this sample, for example, turns the a part of the Grand Canyon, which is a very low uh, low resolution Grand Canyon. It's about 212 pixels uh, in width and height. Um, uh, into a high resolution, uh, more real looking like Grand Canyon style. So this is just one click actually, and can be done also in real time. Um, and of course you can use that feature to, to get several versions of the Grand Canyon, as you can see here, um, apply textures on it and so on. So very, very interesting, especially if you're working with uh, dem files. So another thing with the input terrain is of course you can use it as an as an, uh, as an own sculpting tool, for example. That's why we say uh, you can sculpt inside Word Creator. Actually, you can do because uh, this is just a rough map of how maybe your game world might look like. You're just sculpting you know, the rough shape, where I want a hill, where I want to have some hills, or I want to have some canyon size, and so on, and drop into Word Creator, and then use uh, the internal terrain filters of Word Creator, which I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, to make it looking more realistic. Again, it's just one click and done in real time. So, some nice things you can do here. Okay. So, we have tons of filters actually um, that can turn it, can turn your terrain into a totally different looking terrain. As you can see here, for example, a rich mountain like a desert, like. Uh, yeah, this could be some kind of yeah Kenya maybe, and this here is uh, uh, some moon or crater or some Mars landscapes, yeah, like a volcano style, some mountains in the desert, Arizona style. Also, <laughs> yeah, this is this is Minecraft. So we have included a Minecraft filter. Actually, this is just a terrace filter with a with a with with a, with, with a proper settings to create a Minecraft style. So this was only for marketing reason because you know many people watching Minecraft and so they love it to see that. So <laughs> then of course you can do islands and um, that's actually also something new inside Word Creator because um, you know terrain generators um, that are currently around on the internet they are um, especially used for creating only terrain itself. So and we we said we want to go uh, just a step further. Beside the GPU generation, we want to also be able to um, populate your terrain with, uh, yeah, with trees and stones and grass. So in the end, uh, once you're done with everything, you get a really complete level, a complete, a complete terrain, fulfilled with everything that you need for your game. 
And uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that is what comes out here. We have used some speed tree trees. We have a great cooperation with speed tree. And below here, you can see also some other things. Hopefully, where is it? Here we go. So you can quite realistically populate your terrain with trees or whatever you're looking for. I will show you the distribution settings where you can adjust all this. So we're going to do a nice sample for this. So um, another thing is that um, we also would uh, uh, wanted uh, to be able to, uh, to create biomes on a, civil, uh, on a, on a um, single terrain map. So I personally don't think this is a good example for a biome, but we're going to change this. But uh, it just shows uh, what the idea behind this is. Um, you can see here we have some kind of uh, terrestrial filters. We have a desert, we have a mountain, and we have uh, high mountain ridges here. So, and again, this is done very, very easy and can be done entirely in real time. That, that was the point, what we wanted, because mostly you, uh, if you're watching a terrains, it's only like you have either desert, you have either canyons, you have either mountains, and uh, it's very difficult to implement biomes and other terrain applications. And um, yes, this was one of our, another major task to um, accomplish this inside World Creator. So now let's see how World Creator looks inside the Unity engine. And after that, I'm going to show you how the alpha version looks like. So again, it's just a peek. OK, when firing up Unity, um, yeah, World Creator can be purchased in the asset store. We have a standard version. We have a professional version of it. Um, the differences, um, the core differences is that the professional version, of course, supports GPU generation. So it saves a lot of time while prototyping your terrain, designing your terrain. Um, also, the biomes are not, uh, are not possible in the standard, so only the professional version comes along with all the nice features that you would like to have if you seriously want to create nice terrains. So once, once you have downloaded, imported the, this asset and entered the license key for World Creator, you can uh, yeah, fire up the World Creator window inside Unity. And here we go. That's the World Creator window. And all you have to do for the first thing is just to hit the new button. And there you go with a nice terrain already. So this is completely procedural generated. Um, the procedural generation is a very complex thing, especially for terrains. It's um, basically only a 2D map that we're creating. Um, so it's not a really a 3D terrain like uh, with the cliffs and overhangs. Um, World Creator could be able to do this, but actually um, the terrain system depends on what you create. So for example, in uh, Unity, the terrain system depends on a 2D height map. So this is the Unity terrain system. I think they're going to update this very soon. Um, but in general, in, inside World Creator, we could create also 3D maps. So this is possible already, so we've taken care of this also. So maybe if there's a terrain system that is able to, to also uh, visualize 3D terrains, then World Creator is ready to go for this. OK, so let's have a look um, step by step. Um, hopefully, uh, the GPU is uh, powerful enough and we have the latest drivers, else we will have problems with the, with the real-time generation or with the GPU generation. There's something I have to explain because um, if, you're, if you're a coder, you probably know what this means. If you're having different drivers, then a uh, driver might have several issues, especially with buffers. And we are creating on the GPU, so uh, that means if a driver has an issue, then you might get a different result from the GPU generation compared to the CPU generation. So I will give it a try. It's not a problem. If it just hangs or it looks different, ignore it, please. <laughs> OK, so um, if I hit generate CPU here, you can see it takes a little time until it's done. If I'm switching over to the GPU, it's a lot faster. It's almost real time for a very low uh, resolution terrain, but it's not pure real time. So if I'm um, changing here to real time generation, now um, every change that I'm going to do is instantly done on the GPU and transferred back to Unity. So for example, if I'm moving, I'm going to explain this um, uh, as well very soon. But moving f uh, the general strength of this terrain, you can see it changes instantly, so in real time. So, OK, um, let's get back first to the, to, the, to the things here. The random seed, of course, is used for if, you, if, if, if I'm going to change, for example, the seed value and hit generate, you get a different terrain out of it. 
So you have many, many possibilities actually to find a good shape that might, feed, uh, might uh, meet uh, your needs for your terrain, for your kind of terrain that, that you want to have in your game. Of course, this is a bit too random maybe for game developers or for game designers. So this is something where the input terrain comes into action, what I, what I showed up first. Um, of course, I mean, uh, game studios uh, wouldn't click a thousand times on random seed until, uh, un until they get the terrain that might look like what they want to have in, inside the game. So they would use the input terrain feature to scout the terrain and then use Word Creator to make it more realistic. I will show you this also. Okay, the next thing is um, tiling. Well, this, this was something that people were crying after, after we released Word Creator. All, everybody wanted, oh, we need tiling, we need tiles, we need tiles, we want to create larger terrains. So we had, yes, uh, only a few weeks time to implement tiling. It works. It's not very comfortable, but it works. <laughs> um, uh, the alpha version of, uh, of uh, the standalone is doing it totally different. I will explain it later. So if you want to use tile terrains, it's possible. I show you also here. So you just check the tile here, hit generate, and then of course, World Creators uh, expects that you would have um, neighbors to the left, to the upside, to, to the right side, and so on. So that's why the, these borders here uh, appear. You can see here. So now if you want to, for example, create another tile to the left, you just hit new, create a new terrain, check the tile, and tell what creator to use the X position on oh, the wrong one here. Uh, okay, we have a different, th there you see what I meant. There's a difference between the GPU and the, C uh, and, and the CPU generation as it seems like. Oh, wrong side. Oh, we have, yes, we have set back the the seed value because this is quite important. So now you have create another tile and yeah, there you go. So what you see here also is the first tile has a different, has a different general strength. If I set it back, then these tiles fit perfect. So what is nice about this is that everything that you further change inside World Creator, like creating biomes, um, is also supported in the tiling. So for example, if I'm going to add for the second tile uh, just another or additional filter, I'm going to explain this very, very, very quickly. Let's see uh, what is really nice. I love the canyon filter. I don't know why, but this looks always great. So if it changes to canyon, you can see that Web Creator puts them all together and it just fits perfectly together. And now you have a canyon on the, uh, on the, on the right side. And you can keep on just doing like um, five tiles in the, in the X uh, direction or you know you don't have to be completely square you can do whatever kind of shape you want so um, what is interesting I've, I've seen on a, by a user for by one of our customers is that, that he has done a dungeon game with it it's just setting up terrain tiles you know like this and it was a top-down view so it was walking through a dungeon actually I never seen that idea but it's I mean it works it's it's just cool anyway so um, so this is the tiling system. It's a very powerful, actually. Um, each tile is handled separately. So um, yeah, the, we, were, we were blamed on the internet because <laughs> we were not having a one, one global setting for the tiles. But the uh, decision was more like, uh, if you want to have a tile, and then you, want, uh, then you uh, I, uh, are able to design that tile specifically. So you actually have to click a little bit more to adjust it in, into a whole system. But you have more control of that single tile, and that was more worth doing this than having a global view of the entire world. Um, anyways, because also if we have a global view of the entire world, this would restrict that we, we are creating tiles that always fit into a matrix, like, you know, it's always like a, like a quad or something like that. So that's what we didn't want to do, um, just to achieve different hanging up tiles together. Okay, so let's move this tile now away again. Let's get back to this one. Okay, then we have these, uh, let me just regenerate. Okay, now, of course, we are um, also taking into account the environment settings, like the sun direction or like the mean sea level. You can drag, drag and drop your water inside. Uh, you can drag and drop your, your light source inside and make the generation, depending on the sun direction, for example, you want to have trees or specific trees at the shadow part of your terrain and other trees on the sun part of your terrain. And as you move your sun, the tree is being set accordingly again. 
So this is interesting if, uh, if we have finished the real-time component of World Creator, because then you could, for example, uh, make a simulation like the sun is moving, and you could just grow things like out of the shadows as the shadow moves. So this is more like a scientific thing, actually, not, maybe not for a game. Um, so the other thing which is important when, when it's about terrains is the height map resolution, of course. Currently, we're working on a very uh, low resolution. Um, World Creator supports a resolution up to 8K. I'm not going to do this on this machine. I don't know how much memory this one has. It's not recommend to use 8K, OK? I just want to make this clear. The Unity terrain system, is, um, its limit is 4K, actually. Officially, it's 4K. Uh, per code, and I don't know, nobody knows this, um, it was interesting while we were developing World Creator, we just dropped in an 8K map and it worked out of, out of the box. So the Unity Train is able to, uh, to also use the 8K map or maybe 16K if you have enough memory on your side. It's not a problem, but it's not really recommend. Um, you can see if I change to one uh, to, to 1K map here, we get a much higher resolution. We have more information that World Creator can use to um, to create procedural content. So if I move now in, you can see that it looks a bit bumpy, maybe too bumpy. Um, and this is of course something that has to do with the resolution. Going to a higher resolution, we have more information, so we have more bumps on a lower scale. Okay, so yeah, the other settings here are actually Unity related settings. So I, um, almost everything that you can see here can be also adjusted inside the um, inside the, uh, the Unity terrain tools, because World Creator creates 100% Unity terrain. Actually, we're not using a specific own terrain system that we included into Unity. That's always also a question of customers that purchase World Creator. Is your terrain system capable of using or compatible with other terrain tools? Yes, it is, because it is Unity terrain that World Creator creates. Um, some people ask twice or three times just to make sure about this. Um, OK, I just want to mention that. Um, so I'm not going into these settings, actually, not really interesting. Um, the material can be switched. We have, um, yeah, probably most of you know the, uh, the, the Relief terrain pack. It's a very powerful terrain shader system. Um, you can drag and drop in any kind of terrain shader that you have. It's not a problem. A web creator can handle it. We have, of course, built in our own gradient terrain shader. It's just like dropping a color ramp, and we'll create a user color ramp to visualize your terrain. So nothing very fancy. Um, so the input terrain settings. This is uh, more interesting, the input terrain. That's what I'm going to show you now. Let me move on a little bit. Here we go. So how, how can I now tell World Creator, listen, I have some kind of a height map, and I want you to use that height map, and then I want uh, to apply several filters among it, uh, on it to achieve a nice, visual, uh, a, a nice uh, visualization. So you have actually two, two, two ways that you can do. You can first use an input terrain, uh, and, uh, a unity terrain as an input terrain. So this is quite interesting. So let's say you create a... Here we go with a train. This is a unity train. And now you move on to the sculpting tool, tools here inside unity. Let me see. Brush size. OK. Brush pass. OK. Let's put it up. Uh, not enough. Come on. Here we go. So doing something like this. So I think everybody would admit that this terrain doesn't look really cool. Uh, not really real, so um, okay. How how, you, how we can do this is uh, switching over to World Creator again, and you yeah, have to select it. Sorry for this lock, and I'll uh, just drag and drop this terrain into this field here. You can overtake the splat maps and also the objects that you have placed on the terrain together with, together with the textures. There's no texture applied, so I'm choosing no for this. And if I now generate. Something interesting comes out here. Uh, doesn't look great as well. <laughs> so you first have to adjust the little things like the border blending, removing it down, generate again. Let me quickly go down to a low resolution. So again, it doesn't look really pretty nice. So let's increase or decrease the pixel error, making it like 
more information with it. So we already have some noise applied. Um, but it still doesn't look like as we want to have it. So what you would do is, for example, you could um, increase the height scale value here to move out a little bit to trade. Now we're getting closer to what this one here is. But it's still, um, okay, it looks now better than the first one, but what about the lower parts? They don't have any kind of information, actually. And that's, what, that's actually something where you, where you come up with uh, mixing in uh, several things, like reducing the strength, and you're getting information on the lower parts. Now it's getting, now it's getting more like a real-looking terrain. So what, what does this mean? Actually, Web Creator takes the data from the first terrain and mixes it together with the original terrain that Web Creator creates with its, with its procedural generator. So for example, if I'm just changing the random seed value here, let's make it random, then you will see that these things will change. But the general shape will be tried to kept as, as good as only possible. And uh, yeah, now you can go on with this and uh, maybe you want to achieve exactly the same shape that you see on the left side. So you can do this with this sample resolution. This is actually um, completely new. Uh, so everybody who has what created 2.2.0, this is 2.2.1. This has been completely changed. Um, the, higher, uh, the, uh, the higher the resolution, the more Web Creator tries to keep the original shape. But still mixing in the things that Web Creator has created before. So this, this gives you actually more control about if I want to keep that sh uh, the original shape because it, it is a must-have, then here is the way you could control this. General, something like 6432 gives good results also. Okay, now let's move on to the terrain mask and terrain filters. Actually, these are the things that makes Web Creator so powerful. Um, the terrain masks are used to create biomes, saying like um, a mask encapsulates multiple filters, and the filters define what kind of terrain you actually want to have, like a canyon terrain, like if you want to apply erosions on it, or sedimentation, or rich terrains. So I'm going to first show you the uh, terrain filters. The basic filter is absolutely required because the basic filter creates those noise maps. It's not just a random noise. It's, uh, of course, it's a noise pattern that we're using here. And it's a um, very interesting thing because this is some, some kind of an idea of uh, Johannes Rosenberg. That's why he's also a genius in this, in this area. It's sort of different of what uh, people might know or, or, uh, or what has been written down into, 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 into books. He never uh, made any official statement anywhere on the internet, nor uh, did he make any conferences or visited or presented his idea. And that's actually, yeah, maybe good, maybe bad, I don't know. <laughs> so the basic filter generates um, the basic noise that is required. And uh, we have here, for example, these level strength values. And these level strength values are available for each, for each filter that you, that you apply. And they control... Uh, let me see if I get a good, good, good view here. Let's move all this input terrain so we can... This? No, it's not that one. Here we go. So we can see it better. So these level strength control um, the bumpiness, let's say bumpiness, the, the, the noise strength at a, at a specific level. So let's say if you want to reduce the bumpiness at a very high resolution, you just choose to remove this and it gets smoothed out at the higher resolutions. We can do this also in real time. So you're smoothing out your terrain at specific levels. You have a lot of control about these settings. Of course, you can also use it to create something totally crazy uh, if, if required. So these are the level strength. Um, the level strength can also be used to um, to create a larger area of that terrain. So if you, if you watch at uh, this corner here, it will be exactly the same that we have here. So it has been increased. So the size has been, has been actually, in, in width has been doubled, and you can keep on this game by increasing this and so on. So this is actually what you could do to create larger areas on a single terrain map. 
Um, again, the standalone works a little bit different on this. Okay, so um, let's see what else, uh, what, 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 what uh, other terrain fillers we have. There's quite interesting list, a lot more we follow. So we have, for example, this rich filter here. If I'm dra uh, dropping in the rich filter, the terrain gets rich mountains. You can adjust the, the values. These are just the startup values here you can use. Um, another nice thing, again, is, for example, the terrestrial filter. Here we go. Uh, the transform into res. Please remember, this is done all in real time. And um, now, the filters that you apply, um, just like in other terrain generators, you usually are applied over the entire terrain. So there was a user that told us, maybe it would be cool if you could do some 3D filter applyment. And uh, actually, that idea was really awesome. Because then we started to, um, to, um, yeah, to modify the terrain generator and allow the user to apply those filters also depending on the, on, the, on the height. So now actually what you do here is already creating different biomes depending on the height rates or, or within a height range. So it's very easy to, to um, yeah, actually to do now an island, for example. And um, those filters can also be applied depending on the slope. So you have many, many variations. Uh, which actually results in totally different looking terrains. Just a few changes, it looks totally different. Okay, so um, another thing which is pretty awesome and we're absolutely proud of it is uh, the erosion system. Um, why are we proud of it? First, it's really great. <laughs> it's really, it creates really nice, stunning erosion uh, results. Another thing that we're proud of it is that it's GPU capable, so it's real time capable. Um, actually, I don't know if you're the first terrain generator is doing this in real time. I thought that there was another one, but not what machine. Um, they're doing is it, it also in real time. Um, I never tested it out, but it took us about four months to implement it on a GPU and to find a way um, to, to get it on a GPU. So why is this difficult? I think the programmers of you might already know this. If you're coding for the GPU, you have to, or, uh, or especially like an erosion filter, you have to analyze the whole map and also the neighbor pixels. And doing this, uh, yeah, doing a threading system or on the GPU, which is heavily multi-threaded, um, you have to take care of a lot of yeah, things into account so that it still works without crashing. And yes, we did that, and finally we came up with a with a nice erosion, here we go. So if this computer now hangs, okay, if it just crashes something like that, not sure, hopefully not. Let's see. Awesome, here we go. Okay, this is a totally overdrawn um, erosion, and you can change the settings, and you can see it just affects it in real time. Now another thing, which is interesting is that um, you not only rely on one filter that you can apply, you can mix them all together. For example, you want to click and put in a rich filter, you want to put in a, let's see, what did we have, a canyon filter, there we go, then you can drag and drop them together. Well, creator is going to take them both into account, and you can see that the order of the filters um, gives also different results. So first one is applied is the rich filter, giving those edges here, these, these hard lines, and then the canyon filter is applied over, uh, over it again. So if I'm moving up this filter, we get a different result. So again, you have many, many variations, and beside this, you could use, again, the terrain height to make it different. Where is the terrest one? Again, oh, let's put it in the Minecraft, why not? Everybody loves Minecraft, so let's put it in. Here we go. Quite a wise to see that. Okay, so these are the filters. Um, there's also a sediment filter I would like to show you. It's a pretty nice one, especially mixed with a, oh, that was a mask. Let's put it in. Where is it? Here we go. So the sedimentation, this is a very basic sediment filter, actually. Um, I mean, sedimentation is, is uh, like, you know, particles falling down, or maybe a asteroid drags into the orbit and all the particles falling down and every, every dust that is laying on the ground. 
And you can see that here that the sediments uh, walk down um, the hills and uh, uh, how, how does it say? I, I don't know how, 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 uh, how to say this in English. They are collecting each other or they're summing up in the lower parts of the terrain. And of course you can also here change different things to make sedimentation together with erosion looking quite interesting. So this is just a very, very basic sedimentation implementation. A lot more sedimentation filters will, will be overtaken or uh, will be implemented from gear control, which has a, had an absolute powerful sedimentation system. Um, this will be also quite a heavy task because uh, very, very difficult to do this on the GPU side. But we have a solution and we're on it. Okay, now I would like to show you the mask about the biomes. So imagine it like we have the basic terrain of the first mask, and now I would like to create a biome here and maybe a biome here. So we're adding another terrain mask, and on that terrain mask, we're going to add, let's take the Minecraft again, because that's the one we can see obviously. If I now hit generate, the terrain, the, the whole terrain will turn into a Minecraft style. So what is needed is a mask in kind of a, in sort of a texture uh, that identifies the, the areas that should be taken into account while applying the Minecraft. So there are two ways. You can click to edit mask, just instantly create a new mask and paint on it. Or you just, maybe you have a mask already applied or created by your artists. Let's see this part here. Drag and drop this in here. And uh, uh, to generate. And here we go. So this is the reason for the mask, to combine them. And of course, um, the value here, so actually it's not really a mask, it's a blend map. So if you want to have hard edges that blend over, then you have to make it very hard, as you can blend it over like, you know, um, so you have a better smoothing walking from one terrain to other terrain uh, type. Um, these masks can also be edited, for example, Let's paint this area here, like this, and hit generate. You can see being applied. You can do this also in real time. It's not a problem. You can see that it quickly changes as you paint. So now with more masks and interesting filler combinations, you can achieve a fantastic real-looking terrain. That's not a problem at all. So, okay, though this is, this is actually the terrain generation. Now, um, as I said earlier, um, there was also about placing objects and texturizing this terrain. So uh, let me quickly um, delete this one here and create a new one and get rid of this one here. Maybe this gets too, lots, too much performance. Okay, so let's see what we can do with the texturing. Um, thing here. It's very easy. This is exactly the same way as you would do in the upcoming standalone version. Let's say you have a set of textures on your own and um, you just drag and drop these textures in here. Here we go. Hit generate. Now you have texturized this terrain. And now you can keep on. This is a uh, more interesting thing. Let's make some rocky things here. Put it in here. And now let's say that we only want to have these rocks along a specific slope, like a higher slope between a higher slope range. Hit generate. Okay, I missed that here. Uh, here, here. Here it starts already. So let's increase the weight. Uh, you don't see that, right? Do you see that? Yeah, you see that. Okay, perfect. Now this is just one thing. Now, um, another idea of one of our customers was it's a little bit hard to adjust, click generate, adjust, click generate, see what comes out. So that's why we have integrated these visualized heat maps. If you um, click on it, you can see where the distribution of this texture will be. This is another thing that will be done in real time on the inside the standalone version. There are several issues uh, with Unity Editor, uh, so we were not able to do that. Um, also depending on the height. So you have many distribution settings here. What is quite interesting is, for example, I'm going to show you if you want to apply uh, snow. Let's say you want to have snow at the, at, the, at, the, at the higher edges here and drag and drop in a snow texture. Let's turn on visualize heat maps again. 
I have to select it always. And now let's say I want to have it like this. Maybe like this. This is just a thing. So would you say this looks natural? Not really, right? Okay, so I mean it looks nice on the first view, but it doesn't look really natural. And why doesn't it look natural? Because um, you wisely can see that uh, move, move, move. You have these lines are just like cut off. So again, here we are mixing in some other um, possibilities like a height noise type. We can, for example, put in a static map. This could be, for example, this here. And generate, and you get several variations, which you can then further adjust. Sometimes you don't have a texture that you can use, use right away. So you go into uh, switch to a dynamic map. And this dynamic thing here, pretty interesting because um, it is used, it's a, it's a noise pattern again, it's a probably noise implementation, um, which can be used to, uh, yes, to uh, create your own kind of flow, maybe like this. So this looks a lot better than before. So these dynamic noise maps can, you, can be applied also for objects, for textures, can be applied for terrain tiles, for whatever, so you can modulate everything in any kind as you just can imagine of. Then, of course, um, follow sun, um, what I mentioned before. Um, texturing can also depend on the sun direction, like shadow parts. The cavity is something really nice. Um, I'm going to show you this one because this, this is a really cool thing that, that, that makes actu actually texturing much, much more natural. Um, I'm going to visualize the heat maps again. And let's say we're using a convex map. So the cavity feature, um, there are two cavity possibilities, the convex and the concave. Uh, where is it? There we go. Here you can see it. So it takes into account how many pixels are at the same level and smoothes it out for the lower parts of the train or for the higher parts of the train. Um, this looks especially very useful if you're using um, an erosion system, like uh, let's put in an erosion, and you want to get between between the uh, you know between the, the mountain parts here. Then you can adjust a little bit. See, like this, and you can texturize depending only on these areas. And usually, if you're placing objects like trees, then you probably won't have trees in these areas, maybe more uh, above, you know, the, the hills. <laughs> like this. Now it looks a lot better than before. Okay, this is, as you can see, this is just done in a few seconds, actually, and we got a quickly a nice result. So, the, this is about texturing. You can also use a color pick map, uh, uh, a color map. Um, uh, imagine like a satellite image, put in a satellite image, and then you only want to place uh, textures depending on colors, then you can do this here. Uh, same for objects. And yes, regarding objects, I'm not going to show you everything here because uh, the settings are almost identical. We can populate it. Um, of course, inside Unity, it makes, um, it makes sense to, have, um, to differentiate between trees, details, and uh, several meshes. Meshes could be like houses or whatever. Um, trees, of course, for um, populating your terrain with, uh, with uh, trees. So let's see, do I have some trees here? Yes, here we go. The mountain tree prec. Pack from Nature Manufacturer. Here we go. So let's drop in a tree. Uh, let's see, the occurrence should be something about 30, 34%. And let's populate trees. So again, now here we could use the cavity feature, for example, like the concave, to only drop in trees in the lower areas here. And you have many, many, exactly the same possibilities that you would have with the texturing. So you also can apply objects depending on the texture only. All you would have to do is just to use a texture, select the texture that you want, and it will be, yeah, placed only where this, where this texture is. So it's very safe in this reason. Okay, so um, another thing 
which is quite new, is the post tab. Here you can place in objects, especially like houses, and just um, deform the terrain depending on these objects. I mean, objects are like, like a house, it ne never would be like this, placed on a, you know, on a, on a big slope. Uh, then you would have the option to, to make it a little bit flat so the house will uh, perfectly fit on the terrain. The same for roads and rivers. Very easy to put in roads. It's just like uh, clicking here around on the terrain. You can see the passes. Uh, hit generate. There you got a nice road in that terrain. Of course you can control this road. <laughs> so by meaning like um, if you want to uh, align it to the terrain height or um, uh, for example if you want to have some some noise uh, for that road so it, does, it looks a more like a path then all this can be done here. Uh, this same tool can be also used for river creation just use the knobs and drag down a little bit and you have a real nice river. In the next update we're going to um, create this mesh for a road also for the river place in a a water object and you have a really nice river that follows um, yeah, the river path actually. So this is some kind of an experimental feature actually. It's quite good for doing some basic roads. Um, it's a little bit limited and not comparable to professional assets in the asset server that are mainly for road creation. Okay, so um, another thing, of course you can save this terrain. You're not saving the terrain asset. You're saving an XML file, which is just a few kilobytes large, and you can share that XML file with your friends, and then they can use that to recreate exactly the same terrain that you have created. So it's not like you're putting out a whole asset, which could be several megabytes, but only an XML file. Um, you can split that terrain, you can export um, that terrain into the known formats like PNG, JPEG, RAW, RAW 16. It also has an OBJ file for further adjustments in any application of your of your choice, what you what you ever want like to see. Okay, so now I would like to quickly show you the alpha. Uh, do we have five, six minutes? Okay, so let's see that. I'm going to say that. Okay, so um, so actually this is the first time I'm showing this uh, public. Um, currently the alpha um, is only uh, available for people who pre-ordered World Creator 2. Um, it took a long time until we get into a, until we get into a point where it was. I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, a low resolution. We're going to a f uh, no better now. Um, so, what is this all about here? So you can see that the that the UI itself is almost identical to what you have seen in the unit version. So the reason is because. Most people told us that um, they loved the UI design. They loved how simply how simple it is. You have step by step like surface. Uh, you have the texturing. You have the environment things you can set up. This is just a prototype UI. So a few things will change. It it's, it, it will be more obvious which sex, uh, sections uh, you are you are going to work on. Um, and um, but it's already a little bit changed. As you can see here, we have the object step has been dropped. There's an environment tab where you can place objects, details such as grass and flowers, uh, apply wind settings, water, uh, some specific things here that can be used to set up all your terrain. The texturing um, is also grouped into layers. This was also a big user request. Um, in, the, in the new version of Web Creator for the, for the standalone, this is an updated version actually, um, terrain layers. There are input terrain layers, there are terrain layers, there are texture layers and object layers. And those layers can be used to give you even more flexibility. I'm trying to create a terrain now. Let's see if it works. There we go. It worked. Awesome. You see that we still have some glitches. Okay, you need a good computer for that one. But you also see some differences. Um, the first thing is we have real-time texturing applied here. So everything you do here is now in real time. The same will be for object placement. So if you drag and drop a tree and you distribute a tree, depending on what slider you move, doesn't matter. It's 
placed instantly. Same for grass, for trees, for objects, for stones, whatever. So what you see is what you get instantly. Um, the terrain itself, the really interesting thing is that we have so-called areas. Um, these areas define a specific area on the terrain. You can't see it right now because this is, uh, again, is a prototype. Um, but nice to see that these areas, I'm going to paint here, for example, like this. Now, again, this is a blend map. And these areas, you can create multiple areas, can be um, assigned to textures or to input layers. For example, if you want to have this area assigned to the, uh, to the canyon filter only, you hit assign, uh, generate a serrate again. We'll see that it changes. It should, hopefully. Okay, here we go. Oh, Jesus. So now we have the canyon filter applied only at that thing. You know, the difference not really, not really good to see that. So, but anyways, the basic concept is same for the textures. You can same use the same area and assign it. And this, well, this one works. Yeah, perfect. Then you can see that the texturing is applied instantly only on these parts. Again, you have the same distribution things like height range, slope range. It will just adapt to the area. So you actually have a lot more uh, flexibility in designing your terrain with those areas. So the areas can also be combined. And what's really awesome, and we're absolutely proud about this, I mean, uh, we have a history because of that terrain SDK that I mentioned earlier. Uh, our terrain SDK was able to visualize real-sized planets. So, um, like Earth, Mars, and you can just fly from one planet to another. So we know about terrain development, we know about the terrain systems that are actually available. And we develop now our own terrain system again, uh, especially for world creator, to get rid of the tiding system. The idea is, um, you can create any size of terrain you want. The only limitation you have is your hard disk. So if you have a two terabyte hard disk, then, you, then your terrain can be two terabyte in, si in, in size. Uh, if you have a server running, then you can create that terrain on that server. It's not a problem. It's streamed automatically. Um, and that allows you also to, to get rid of those typical limitations, such as 4K, 8K. It doesn't matter. You can also do a 7,123 7, pair 63 if you want. It's not a problem anymore. And this terrain system will move to Unity next year. So we're going to create a terrain asset for this terrain system for Unity, to get rid of that, you know, those limitations. And another thing which is awesome is that this terrain system allows us to be real-time capable for the same things that you've seen, uh, seen in the Unity system. Now you might ask, how can, how can they be real-time for, uh, for a two terabyte? Um, that's a good question. This is a system that only takes um, into account the areas that you're going to change and while you are working beside, it just changes the other things. Just a very, very rude explanation. Okay, so um, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, do you have any questions? <laughs> Thank you. Don't wonder, it is going to crash. Yes, I bet it would. Okay. Yes. Is it me? Unreal, yes. Many people asking for it, and I can uh, confirm Unreal is coming next year. Definitely, yeah. Uh, the real time thing is, I mean, you couldn't be, uh, you couldn't do this in real time in the Unity editor because the Unity terrain needs to be updated. So um, this this is actually the the problem. So the 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 trick inside Unity is to to create a simple plane with a height tessellation, apply that height map that has been generated on on the GPU, but, and 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 uh, you did see that there was a confirm button down. So if you want to move that terrain to your Unity terrain, you have to hit confirm, and then you have a Unity terrain. This, this could be possible if someone comes up with this, like, an, uh, like another publisher is saying, I have a train system, I have some, some, some sort of other thing, could you please integrate it? 
It's not a problem. Actually, we just generate a 2D map, a height map, and that can be applied to whatever mesh you want, as long as it, you know, handles it as a terrain map. That's not a problem, yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. It's an it's an interface system. It's currently not open, but you can. Yes, we have we have uh, take care of this, so everybody can can write his own things. Excuse me. Like a GeoShader or your language? No, no. It's it's uh, so so in, in in Unity case it's just CG, uh, or in the CPU it's just C sharp of course implementations. And the standalone version it's again because it's done in Unity, uh, so you can use Unity shaders, or use your own. Implementation. That's not a problem. Yes. 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 Of course. Of course. Of course. That makes also sense. There are many. Um, no, not 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 that many. But there are some people out there that uh, have awesome terrain. You know, terrain uh, post effects or something like that. Uh, they are they are selling. Uh, so it makes sense for us. Yes. Well, caves would be great. Um, I said earlier that uh, World Creator could do this already, um, but, the, but this depends on the terrain system. The terrain system is um, 2D only, so no caves inside Unity. Um, our terrain system will be updated next year, where you also can create caves. But the problem here is that um, unless you know um, the majority of the game engines or the terrain systems that, that uh, developers are using for the games does not support such a system, it doesn't make any sense. Oh, so. You mentioned that you used a uh, basic voice map as a start tool for every terrain. Can you shed any light on the type of algorithm you use that syntax burden or something you developed yourself? This is something that we developed uh, uh, ourselves. This is something that uh, this genius, I, I really have to say this guy is a genius, he's super. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and yeah, enjoy the rest of the <laughs>